It's funny that's so it's so random. You and like I don't know. Like if no one knows what you're talking about, so many people have these like amazing ideas of like, oh, Japanese game shows. Yeah, all of them are bad. That's great. Bears looking honey off of uh, off of strangers. Hobos racing to see which one could uh, uh, shave the bear into an interesting design. Awesome. Not what Tyler did at all, but. <laughs> Yeah, hard to shave a bear with scissors. <laughs> I'm not going to know any. It's going to be so bad. <laughs> that would be a weird one like you just vomit on the thing like all right so what did i make even you should be able to know kirby <laughs> it's face from nick jr it's a protagonist I can't see. It says watch stream. <laughs> oh, okay, so I have to click on it. Oh, um, I don't know, that's a weird one. Uh, most of it's all curvy, except that it comes to the sharp. Put my hands up in front of it. No, I don't know. That was my guess of you vomiting. Uh, like, really, that would be a lot of the characters. This is a strange blob of thing. But I, I want to say uh, the, the general shape language through this is a setting of style to talk to like, probably a younger audience. So it explains a lot of the curviness. Some of the angles, though, at the top maybe hint towards being an antagonist. Uh, and I want to say it's either, I don't know, I think this is a, a tricky choice because in Pose, you would talk about like mm, something deviant of the norm is like antagonist worthy, but maybe this is supposed to be a playful interaction between two things. So I, I, I don't know, it's a strange one. I'm going to say protagonist. That's a my gut feel. Okay, um, that is an interesting one. Um, let's let's do at the end. I think that's kind of funny, um, but give me a second. I'm gonna do a sh really really terrible doodle of this thing. Do do do. Uh, <laughs> That's an interesting like breaking point. Like, will people be able to tell what my my thing is? Can I save time? <sighs> Screw it. Hmm. I don't know. I think this looks like a Pokemon to me, uh, which would mean that it's like a game character design. I don't know if it would be the TV show. Uh, I think it's very simplified, but there's like there's things about it that just seem I don't know, too much, too designy. So I wanna say it's like a game. Did you keep it eyes? Yeah, the mouth thing. <laughs> well, we all know that mountains are evil, so uh... That would be too easy. So this complicates things a little bit more. I want to say this like strange 
a uh, hunched pose that is going on is uh, is trying to take up so much space so it's a little bit more more evil. I don't know. It has those senses of like lurking. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Looks like some weird wolf thing or oogie boogie from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> But uh, there's all these like stray sharp, um, sharp, sharp fur effects, and those kind of they tell a little bit more of a story to me about this being um, being sinister, out of place, a little bit like um, wild. So that's what my guess is going to be. I think I don't know what it's like from really it looks like it's old uh this looks like old character design kind of stuff so i want to say it's an old movie but i just don't i'm not sure about do, 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 do. An old movie and it is a big old antagonist It's true. Though, like, if we think about, uh, was it Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends? Like, Eduardo, it does, it is supposed to be a play off of the fact that it is supposed to, it's like, looks like a big, scary, uh, intimidating, beastie thing that has, like, large, uh, large eyes and could, uh, and large, like, pointy, like, teeth and stuff. And it's supposed to have a uh, big old, nasty horns but even with all that language and stuff they actually try to curve it out and it, it is supposed to be a play on uh it reading as something evil when it's when it's not so i think that, it, that that's kind of like that i don't know i think that's going to be a hard thing of uh them trying to tell a story uh between expectations so i'm down let's do this bring on the next touch them on their on their server. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So I think I don't know. Unless you've like tricked me quite a lot, that this is Spyro and he is the protagonist. Uh, and although it uses a lot, a lot of like pointy language, there is this like young hero quality. Um, that is uh, that is shown off through kind of like the puffed chest, but particularly through this like slightly larger, uh, I don't know, they'd say like childlike head is the way that I think it's supposed to read as uh, not as sinister. Do, do, do. I was like, we would say that this is maybe, or I would say, that this is kind of like a happy, uh, like, puppy stance. Little bits. Little bits. Beep, beep. So I think that, I don't know. And it's too, I don't know, too small to be actually evil. It, like, even if it were, like, uh, the antagonist, it'd be like the, the little henchman evil. I should have used a smaller brush. But I don't know what a Vigar is. Is that from the same thing? What's a Vigar? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. That one is uh, like what we were talking about with the, uh, um, what is, uh, with like uh, Eduardo from uh, Foster Home to Imaginary for imaginary friends was that they're like, they're taking a lot of the language of large head, um, st small body proportions being less uh, intimidating, being more childlike uh, and trying to twist it with something that we don't have, which you kind of brought up is color. That the color language tells a whole lot. And there is compared to the other 
um, what the hell were those things called? Uh, munchkins. I don't know. <laughs> Compared to the other munchkins, <laughs> like <laughs> yordles. That's nasty. Um, uh, is that they? They are actually as a whole generally a lot softer and rounder whereas if i remember him he was as sharp as they could get him uh to try to spite that small like the the baby shape that they had or baby proportions i want to say it's an antagonist with all the pointy bits um there is some curvy things, which if I am guessing correctly, this is some sort of like strange cyborg Sonic the Hedgehog. And so the curvy things or the curvy ends that are uh, that are there are trying to say, like tie it back to like a protagonist. But the overall sharpness felt in like the limbs um, seems significantly more sinister. I don't know. What is this pelvic girdle area? I don't know what that is. These are weird shapes. Uh, corruption. <laughs> is that how I did things? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Whatever's happening in this region is like, it's weird. I want to say that there's like a, there's like a ball socket with some like, uh, that would have hydraulics in the center, and what's happening there is like a twist between like a like a thigh and a uh, to a knee area, but it's just weird to me. I mm. maybe it's a tail and that's a foot coming forward. I don't know. That's a weird ass thing. Oh, is that it? The I don't know. I know some of them. Or I think I know some of them. I'm going to be totally wrong. Uh, but overall... <laughs> overall, if I were to look at this, the things that pop out are generally curvy. And again, like I said, with uh, the thing that may or may not be spiral, there's this like puffed out hero chest. Uh, and like um, stance that somewhat, I want to say, feels like feels more like it's trying to be. I don't know, nice, nice and soft, um, and as as heroic as it can possibly be, uh, given the fact that it's using soft language. So I don't know. I want to say that I think. What that thing what, what was the what are those children call it the ratchet and clank is that what this thing is it's a it's... i like it <laughs> get, wrench, get over here uh so i want to assume that that's, this is one of the that characters that's that's my that's my guess um but i haven't played the game I feel like I saw like some like side thing so uh, that talked to this majigger, the wrench, <laughs> or sprocket. <laughs> doo, 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 doo. There's a glove. There's this tiny tail. Only, like sharp bits are at that tail, and these big swooping cat ear things. Uh, or maybe it's like an Arctic fox business. Um, <laughs> that may be kind of sinister so i don't know but i would say the majority of this thing's shape language is soft and sweet so this is the protagonist and i want to say that maybe i want to say it's like a, a like a a zelda link sort of thing but this is like the hero but it's really subservient to like some other thing <laughs> yeah i don't know because I think I remember kind of seeing something about that game. I'm not too certain. I don't know what it is about this thing. I want to say, I would want to say the lack of definition of a, of like a nice clear head, 
starts to paint this as some sort of side character because it doesn't it, it starts to read in that like mm, i don't know how to explain it as the other sort of thing that like as cool as i don't know uh i guess we take elder scrolls as argonians were um since they're other they are not heroes they're too different um uh, so I want to say this is like maybe side villain because there's a lot of little pointies um, or maybe it's the, I forget. Uh, so in a different like storytelling capacity uh, of like heroes, villains, and who builds up the group, there's this concept of like the, the five man band uh, of like, this is, that is your like the people in a group. And there's like your, uh, your heart, your, uh, I forget, the, the, the guardian. Um, but this one, to me, reads like the Lancer. And that kind of takes itself from, uh, what is that thing called? Um, from like King Arthur and Sir Lancelot. That Lancelot sometimes was like a good guy and sometimes he's a bad guy. Uh, and that he's the person that challenges the the main protagonist and kind of keeps that person on edge, but also challenges their authority and kind of uh, shows that like you can be a good person and make wrong decisions, <laughs> which is Lance a lot sometimes. So okay, that this is Linus area and it lends itself more of the time on the plus, on being a protagonist and a part of the protagonist group. But I want to say that, oh, that it really, this is kind of a bad character. I don't know. Or mostly a bad character. Hard to say. But it, the lack of a proper head making it a bad guy, kind of. Or at least not the best good guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Nike, the video game? <laughs> this one's weird, but I kind of, like, I don't remember his name. Croc the Croc. No, I don't know. But I, I will say that I'm like uh, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that this is like the the main the the leader in um uh the like '90s cartoon Gargoyles. Uh, and so that I think uh, well, what we talked about is there is this like like I want to say all the language I will stand by it. Uh, it is trying to say like this is evil, um, but I think that was the point of the thing that some things e sometimes things that seem evil are not, and they're actually the good guys, and they protect us from things that are more evil. And although it's hard, I can't like I wish I don't know. Maybe we'll see it and we'll discuss it when we can see the full version of things. But I want to say that there are um, there's like some strong uh, heroic, I wanna say, like uh, 90s like elements to this character that feels, uh, that has that roundness, that has that stability and not like the sinister sharpness that you tend to feel uh, from villains. Uh, villains. That's more like uh, Superman-esque or um, even Batman had that same kind of vibe. And he's also unfortunately supposed to be in that same area of like, I don't know, is he, he's like a sinister looking character, but he's actually the good guy. So this one I'm pretty sure is a protagonist. Uh, though if I had to go off of only the silhouette, I would say that it's it was most likely uh, um, an antagonist. 
but I think I know a little bit more about this one. So I'm going to go with my vote of this one. But shape language, definitely. Whoa. Says, uh, says it's, it should be an antagonist. So uh, same show, I think, um, if I remember correctly. And this, in like a uh, basic sense of the five-man band, <laughs> fulfills that unfortunate rule because people are crappy at uh, writing things of the girl. Um, which you can kind of tell with that like uh, trim waist and the curvier legs. Uh, but whether it is the good guy or bad guy, I think that's uh, tricky to tell. Um, I don't remember. There's like, there's a lot about this that, uh, like we talked about of the, the Lancer, that this could be a uh, love interest, but this also could be the, like, the person that questions the leader. Uh, and you can see it in maybe the confidence of the pose, uh, maybe in the, uh, the strange sharpness that is read in some areas. But there is like more of a confidence that's not just like the demure um, love interest that was so popular in older works. So I'm going to say, oh, this is hard. I don't know. I want to say that it's a little bit more on that like Lancer side uh, of things, uh, of being somewhat evil sometimes. But maybe it is a protagonist, if I remember the show correctly. I know it's a protagonist sometimes, but I'm going to say that uh, the more interesting story arcs of this character are as an antagonist. What is that? It's a yuck nasty. Um, I want to say like this like uh, spindly curve in the body uh, joined with like the sharp angles of, uh, of the shoulders, particularly you can kind of even see them pointing up, tells a lot about being an other. And usually in storytelling, um, other is scary and different and new. So it's a bad guy. Uh, so I want to say that one is primarily an antagonist. No, I'm not. I don't know. There's always possibility. We'll see if it surprises me. But I want to say all the sharpness, skinny uh, and frail uh, is unfortunately not appealing in a lot of storytelling. Um, especially in the way that it's hold itself, like as if it were like a hunchy spider thing. Mm. I don't know. I want to say it's a game. There's a strange angularness that reminds me of like uh, old polygon kind of stuff, but I have no clue what the whole thing is from. How is kind of this one? What the hell was her name? She. That's a very good. Good guy kind of thing, lots of curvy things. But uh, there's a big confidence to it all. I don't know. But there is something kind of, uh, no, I'm trying to like, <laughs> trying to make up reasons why. But it's because I know that this is the stepmom. That was a lot of butt. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, in, uh, in Rapunzel. And that she is villain. Uh, and it's because, and we can, maybe we'll break this apart later, um, you would be able to see that she's more villainous in the sharpness of her face. The rest of this silhouette is actually meant to hide the fact or kind of confuse the fact that she is, she is evil, probably. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> I was, that's some like, that's some Kirby bullshit. That's getting crowded over here. Um, or it's just a head. <laughs> I 
This is a Curve on the Bob, and Curve on the Bobs are, are usually good guys, but there is some strange tells. Uh, and a thing I hadn't discussed um, that isn't a, a complete rule of thumb, but if this is a curvy, Kirby kind of thing, then it's following a, a little rule of um, kind of denoting importance uh, in characters is things that have more detail tend to um, be more important, I want to say. If we think of Kirby as just this lump of a bob, <laughs> then these, this has a lot more detail than just the Kirby lump that is Kirby. So, uh, so maybe those are things trying to denote that it's important um, and has status, maybe. <laughs> so I want to say it's a curvy thing and it is a protagonist. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that thing is. <laughs> maybe it's a maybe it's a ghost thing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna shove you on the other side because you don't deserve to be with the rest of the silhouettes. Oh, maybe it's a fish. <laughs> Is it Ariel's buddy? Flounder, rather like a stupid name? <laughs> That'd be so weird. I don't know, I think it's weird. Uh, could you imagine just being named, well, I guess I, I have met a girl that's just named Asia, several of them, but. It's not like she's named Asian. <laughs> this guy's language. This is like back from the other thing. So I want to say that if it's from uh, Sprocket and uh, <laughs> and Wrench, um, that you, maybe you're just fucking with me, and that it's that I should say the same thing, or you're trying to trip me up and say that this thing is the antagonist to our protagonist. But what I would say is I'm gonna guess that this is an antagonist. And the reason why I'm giving it is that hunch. And hunch tells us about aggression, but it also tells us about this concept of the other, that getting old is weird, that people with deformity it, uh, are, are weird and not to be trusted. Um, so says like the old language of things. Um, so this is probably an antagonist because that's probably aggression. That's probably, uh, uh, and that hunch is saying that, uh, aggression and otherness is not to be trusted. Although it does have curvier ears than the last one does. Weird choice. Cheating. All right. Curvy, curvy fish things. Um, those are, oh, there we go. If those, uh, all of that language to me says two, two protagonists, or at least side characters. I don't know if they're the real hero, heroes, because if it was like Jabber Jaws, uh, he was pretty big and tried to have a big puffy chest sometimes. I'm not exactly sure what this Saturday morning cartoon crap is, but it looks like two derpy sharks. Yeah, but I mean, this is gonna be on like the good guy or the bad guy side. Uh, so I think, um, I think I'm talking about, uh, is this on good guy language of curvy things and uh, approachable and normalized. Actually, it's not normalized. Uh, these are awkward shapes. So that also goes into other not being the ones that you should trust the most. Um, but it's probably on the good guy side. I like that. Hmm. I want to say that this is, oh man, I always mess it up because they call her by something different. But I want to say that this is Sen uh, or, uh, or 
Princess Mononoke. <laughs> and that's her big like hair thing uh, that she wears and that's like the helmet. Um, and part of, if I'm trying to read the language of this, although there are sharp things, I wanna say that there's just like the artistic style. But if I look at this like the terrible blob that I drew, um, that that is that's the main energy and that things are just like deviations trying to trying to show where this energy is uh flowing and then giving giving some more sharp deal detail to things that exist um so i want to say that which i'm not not 100 sure that if, if this is like princess mononoke s but there's this large s curve and curvy uh, and curvy things are good maybe uh so you're a good guy. Even though Ashitaka is the good guy, she's like me, side and side thing. That one's weird. This care, a lot of the language is uh, like I was saying of that. Um, it's normal. There's very little deviation. So most of this wants to read as protagonists. Uh, I'm not not 100% on who this is. Maybe this is Creepy Doctor, because um, that's a trope that comes up a lot of like the, um, you should be able to trust the doctor, but he's too well put together, too trustworthy. There's something wrong going behind those glasses that I cannot see. But I'm not sure. I can't see any glasses. But it looks like that's the, the general silhouette. And I made it kind of more feminine. But I want to say most of that reads as protagonist, especially like the little fluff of like uh, hair that's coming up. I don't know. I'm not sure. Unless this is like, no, yeah. I'm gonna say, let's say protagonist. Not, not too certain. No clue what the hell this guy is. I don't know. Um. <laughs> A lot of, which I think we'd be in such such a different space if we were just talking about anime, because uh, I don't watch a lot. Um, uh, so this could be that like that hidden evil character. Uh, most of this kind of says that like maybe this isn't a uh, this should be perceived as like decent, but he's got something hidden uh, to them. I don't know that hand off to the side is a little bit odd, menacing. I want to know why. Why, what, what, why, why? I'm gonna say, but I don't know. It's talking about like secret power. Um, a lot of this, the forwardness of the entire body. Uh, and as I like create the silhouette, I'm getting a kind of a vibe of like, uh, closed offness of power. It's not the showboatiness that's usually reserved for uh, protagonists, uh, nor does any of the curves particularly speak about um, uh, about simple, I don't know, innocence may or may not be the right term for it. So there's something about this that's like a little bit off. So I'm gonna say it's a, um, uh, it's an antagonist. Unless it's just Thelma. <laughs> she does. And she doesn't, like, her skirt doesn't open like that. All this is reminding me that I have to, like, draw more. But um, this... I had a I had a professor once tell me that like silhouetting is a very important thing when you're creating designs uh, because if you cannot tell 
what what action is happening if it, if the silhouette itself does not tell a story at any frame you stop like a uh, uh, an animation then then you're doing something wrong and not every uh every angle you choose is going to be great but most of them should be able to read clearly and so i thought that was an interesting thing so a good practice for a lot of uh a lot of emerging artists is to practice with a big blunt pen and just create silhouettes of characters to try to see does the action read does their intention read so we'll see if i'm right on any of these because maybe i'm wrong and my teacher lied to me but i think i think their silhouettes did tell a story or at least something that i could start peeling apart and maybe tyler's screwing with it that's a lot Thirteen is a lot. <laughs> what I said. Okay, BNA, huh? You're not sharing screens to me. Am I not? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's an interesting game. Like, you know what I really want to play today? I want to lick someone, but I just don't want to have that lingering flavor in my mouth. So let's let's pull out ukulele. Yeah. But it was playful. I like it. Okay, the interaction between characters. I think I got. Hmm. I thought. I thought it was two characters, but I don't know. It is just kind of one big smash thing. I didn't say it, I guess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think I've seen that movie. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was a nose. <laughs> <laughs> It looks so dumb in my sketch now to look at it. Like if I had to look at that and like, is that a nose in the mouth? Like, oh, that's <laughs> yay. Yay. That's tiny. Yeah, you can't be evil, you tiny little thing. Although its head is not as baby like as I thought, but still baby like. Yeah, because you got the back part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like those big sharp curves from the eyebrows and the mouth come down to a very blunt and short muzzle, which is like more more playful. And like it reads like a um, golden retriever. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Man, those feet are disgusting. <laughs> and what is that thing? Croc and Crocs. I was very excited that they had a Broadway version of Cargoyles. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Screw Hamlet. I have something I need to watch now. <laughs> but 
yeah, you can, <laughs> right? You can see it in the face that like there's there's some curvy stableness to it that was very iconic of that era of like trying i don't know i don't i don't know uh, what heroes happened at that time or what like um real life tropes were important but like the face probably would have given it away as like that's not a villain but everything else yeah very villainous Yeah, I don't know. I would think I was drawing on like since it was that '90s time, uh, big '90s hair was a thing. <laughs> so, but it, it was more spi spiky than than you could do in like a um, like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman wouldn't have spiky kind of hair, <laughs> and it would still be equally large. Where is that guy? Oh, there you are, spindly master. Huzzah. Yeah, the sunken chest really gets it. Where are you? Mm -hmm. And you can see it in the fingernail, uh, if you look. Uh, there's like a choice of sharp fingernails to add to that sense of like claw like uh, like talon thing or in uh, Coco I want to say that it's more of a blunted warm squarish sort of design to it in its core but yeah I do uh, she was a bit old <laughs> if this is flounder I'm gonna be pissed So I wasn't far off on it being flounder, but totally off. Ah, uh, you got me. No, that's what I was, I think that's, I was just looking at it, I'm like, all right, what things could I have gone off of to, to, or what other things was I using to say that it's it was like an antagonist? And that's what it was. It was like a sharp, pointy jaw that was just like, mm, that doesn't feel quite right. But uh, as opposed to the actual picture, his curved uh, like jaw would have read so much more like, oh, that's still good. I don't know, but that hunch, hunches tend to mean something a little bit off. Mm -hmm. Dang, I would have said that they are more protagonisty. No, I like trying to like. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that's who I thought it was. Mm -hmm. But you saying that I don't know who it is, I'm like, okay, can't she can't be Milo, but it looks like him.
Well, thank you. I think uh, it is, I don't know. I, this is a weird sort of game that sometimes, like maybe I should like invest in playing these with my students. Like if I ran an animation class instead of like a general uh, um, 3D arts class, um, I think uh, I think a lot of people miss like don't don't think about the effect of body language, posture, and like uh, like angles uh, or curves and what those that those have been ingrained in part of a lot of the way that we think about things. But it's 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 a relatively codified or codified um, language that artists use and have been using. So you've been trained from like a very young age to read things in a certain way because. These are the tropes that are used. So it is kind of like a, I think it's kind of eye opening. Although it'd be funny, you brought up like how the eyes give away a lot. And um, uh, I think the eye meme is like a, a, an artist thing that goes around every once in a while where artists uh, on Instagram just show their works and a, a collection of their works, but just like only the eyes of their characters, um, which look pretty because eyes are. But yeah, no, I think that'd be an interesting thing to like, not that I want to do this a bunch uh, every time, uh, every week, we, there's a lot of other topics, but like if we were just looking at eyes, that's a different game. Uh, and whether it's an angry protagonist or whether it's just, uh, or an actual like antagonist um, or a worried antagonist might read off as a protagonist. But a, a different thing is like, if we boiled everything down just to color set, uh, like in a lot of these, I think I could have, like the color set itself would have told a story, um, uh, whether or not I can see anything about their expression or their like their pose, like that is a that's kind of that third leg in like visual storytelling. Sometimes when you're developing a character, um, that has that's like that's away from you know their actions. Like what is like uh, when you're looking at a character, you look at you look at their their posture and shape language. You look at their expression, um, and then you look at like the color set, and those three things like uh, subtracted from the rest of like if you look at one and not the other ones, that could be an. Uh, I think that's a funny sort of like oh, what does this color set say? Is this a good or a bad one? Like what do these eyes say? Or that like I don't know. You got me thinking. Got me thinking. <laughs> Thank you for having me and putting together all those weird silhouettes. Bye.